So kind of to go off what Jennifer was just saying, um, at Vancouver Island Regional Library, we uh, just hired a new manager of statistics and um, scheduling. So I'm thrilled about because uh, just to kind of echo exactly what you've been seeing, it's super frustrating. I just finished filling out a bajillion different surveys this year um, to, uh, for our circulation stats, and I just find I pull my hair out at the end of it because I, I'm, I feel like I'm never getting an accurate representation of the circulation stats of our e resources. I mean, ebooks are one thing, audiobooks are another thing, and then we also have our actual research databases and. Are hours due the same as the circulation? I don't know. Or is it really the checkout? What's a checkout compared to a uh, result click? Anyway, so one of the things I thought I would show you is how I have been, just in the past couple of years, revamping some of our statistics to what we currently have, and it needs a lot of work, which is why I'm super thrilled about having this new manager of statistics, who I'll be working with closely um, going forward. Um, and I just I'm speaking and thinking at the same time because I'm trying to figure out how to do those books out. I have your shame. I do. I do. I do. I do. I do. Small, so you kind of can see the scope of it, and I'm going to go back. Okay, so this is tiny, 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 in it, and I don't expect you guys to read this, but I just wanted to show you what I've done is I've got basically a whole bunch of data, and I've got a, a bunch of different tabs. I've got the accurate tab and the inaccurate tab. And the inaccurate tab is the one I use when I'm trying to basically create analysis of what I think might be happening projecting forward into the future. So I'm going to now make this bigger so you can actually read it. So basically, I've got a couple different things. I'm right now in my um, analysis tab, and this is basically where I dump all information, everything. So things that I might not necessarily report about, but I will include oftentimes, like for Acorn TV, I'll put their users, so the tokens that we, uh, that we, get, we, we get charged. And then I'll also put in the plays. Now I'm only using the plays most often when I'm reporting to the executive or when I'm reporting to the board, so um, just keep that in mind. So this is sort of my dumping ground of all information. And this is the all database tab. So this is the actual accurate one. So this is the one I'm telling people, please don't mess with this because you'll make my life misery if you do. So I lock this one down. Um, but what I'm doing is I'm feeding all of the information in these cells into the analysis cells here. So it's pulling all of that information. And every time I update it, it um, on the first tab, the accurate tab, it will update the inaccurate tab. And the reason why I'm saying inaccurate is what I'm doing over here is I'm, it, this stuff is accurate for February. I haven't updated it recently, so sorry. But then what I'm doing is I'm just averaging out for the rest of the year. So I can get an average based off of previous month's data to kind of understand a little bit about where I think we're going, we're projecting for. And I know that many databases like Luda.com or TumbleBooks, they dip down in the summertime, they come back up again in the, in the, in the September. But I just figure an, an, an average is pretty good. Then what I'm doing over on the far right, is I blank it out <laughs> just for uh, privacy reasons, but I put in basically the prices of the databases here. And then I'm just doing a simple uh, cost per search. So I'm di dividing basically my price divided by the total year search. So I can get an understanding for 2019. At this point in time, we're getting an average of X amount of dollars. So you can see here, I'm just going to take this off. You 
can see here that I'm basically getting for free gold, getting a dollar fifteen per um, checkout or per download. Um, for Canopy, I'm getting a dollar fifty-eight. For Hoopla, it's two sixty-nine. For Encyclopedia British Columbia, I'm not doing so hot at a hundred and twenty dollars to check out. <laughs> Um, but this is really helpful for me. Last year, I found out the World Book basically were getting, were basically such a big charge, six hundred and twenty bucks a checkout, which nearly like made me like die. So it's really useful. This is a very basic step, but it's very useful for me to sort of kind of figure out. Okay, well, World Book is being offered at every single one of our school districts on the island. Do we truly need to be spending that much money offering World Book? No. Do I want to invest though in the $120 of checkup for no VC? Yes, I do. So I'm kind of that's how I'm helping myself make decisions. I also um, have a, 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 a committee steering committee, um, collection steering committee, sorry, who helps me also make those decisions. We have a matrix that will be um, that we I've been utilizing it that they will be helping me utilize as well going forward. Um, Acorn TV, I'll just mention really briefly because I know it's a very hot topic for a lot of libraries that are implementing it. Um, we've been having, uh, as you all probably know, some struggles with Acorn TV. It's one of those databases that makes me pull my hair out from an administration point of view, but it also means that I, um, but from a public point of view, it's one of our most popular databases. It's made our streaming use go up by, I think, 264% in the past year alone, um, which is thrilling in the sense that we can do now support binge watching on a weekly basis, which is exciting. Our cost per use for Acorn TV is projected at this point in time for this year, 46 cents a watch. For a streaming database, that's insane. <laughs> really good, insane. <laughs> so, um, but from a, um, do I have stress streams about it? Yes, <laughs> yes I do. <laughs> Um, so I just wanted to t uh, show you really quickly, I'm also using pivot tables to kind of gather a bunch of information. Um, and then lastly, I just really want to show you, I probably am going way over time, I apologize. So I'm summarizing all of this information into the analysis summary tab. And I've got two analysis summary tabs. I've got the accurate one and the inaccurate one. And I'm showing you right now the inaccurate one because these are my projections. And basically I'm summing all of the different types of learning, ebook, audiobook, streaming, whatever it is, to get basically a percentage. Um, and I'm going year over year, so I'm pulling from other different workbooks as well. Um, and this is what I'm kind of working with. And this is what I'm reporting to our communications team, to our executive board. I'm sure a lot of other libraries are doing stuff that's very similar, but if you don't have this and you're interested in, in seeing my formulas and you'd like me to send you um, semi-blinked documents, I would be happy to, to work with you guys and, and send you that stuff. Um, just interestingly, I just uh, was talking to um, Innovative Millennium recently, they're our ILS system, and they also have uh, ERM. I'm blanking on the end, not what it stands for. Electronic oh, Reader. Thank you. <laughs> um, which apparently they're saying that they can do a lot of this stuff for us. Um, I know that a lot of other, um, I've been looking at other digital um, resource management softwares, and I haven't been thrilled with them because a lot of them are US based, and I'm not really thrilled with them idea of giving them a lot of our information. So I've been struggling a little bit with that, but I'm kind of interested to know about how Innovative can help us because they've got many Canadian servers, which is good. So um, I'll let you guys know next year what happens with our new library map, sorry, our new manager of statistics and whether or not we decide to go with the ERM software. <laughs> So it's like, okay, either I see you, I see my notes, or not all of you. Uh, okay, so um, thank you guys, because you pretty much said most of what I was going to say, but I have some specific <laughs> examples of, of how the co-op uses um, statistics, and, and 
um, yeah, so I've got two ways that I'm gonna, two examples that I'm gonna talk about, uh, overdrive selections and um, for renewal negotiations. Um, so we use overdrive circulation data to make collection development decisions. Um, if you have a chance to look at this uh, selections guidelines, they're on the co-op website. Um, and there's all sorts of info, interesting info in there. Oops, sorry. Uh, including the ratios of what we purchase. So all of these ratios are based on certain data. Um, so we ran a number of circulation reports to come up with the following ratios for form, format, audience, and fiction to nonfiction. Um, and I won't read them. But uh, yeah, so all of those are based on like what is actually happening to our collection. Um, and of course, we revisit um, the numbers from time to time um, to make sure that's still accurate. Um, the other thing we use stats for are for decision making and renewal negotiations. Um, so, as both Jennifer and Emily mentioned, cost per use is a really helpful metric um, that we all calculate uh, at times to you, to make a renewal decision and to try to compare the value of different resources. And of course, there are challenges with that. Um, and that's why I'm kind of excited about the breakout group because we can kind of dig down into some of that mess that is trying to compare uh, EV resource stats. Um, so uh, I'm using the overdrive max access package as an example of, of cost per use. Um, for those of you who might not know what that is, that's an unlimited use, an unlimited simultaneous use package of audiobooks. Um, in our case, we purchased um, 25 super popular Blackstone audiobooks, um, and it's quite expensive. It's about 40, it's 4,500 US a year, um, but it gets a lot of usage. So the cost per use for that, um, so the last one year period I looked at, uh, that collection had over 12,000 CERCs. So that's like a 40 cent US per CERC, which is actually pretty amazing. Um, so on the surface you might go, whoa, $4,500 for 25 e audiobooks, that's insane, but it, it makes up for it in the amount it's used. And then we also use usage stats for renewal negotiations. Um, and you know, as a general rule, somewhere around at $2 per use, it starts to get that underperforming feeling. Um, the value varies, of course, um, dependent on the type of resource. So if something's quite unique, um, like Canadian newsstand that has content that's not available anywhere else, um, we may not use that as our only deciding factor. Um, so we'd be unlikely to cancel it based on usage alone because it has that unique Canadian content. Um, so that's one of the ways we use, use the data uh, to make decisions. And, and just to reiterate those challenges that Jennifer was talking about, um, you know, when we're making these decisions, we're trying to, you know, kind of create a hierarchy of what's performing best. Um, but calculating cost per use when use is kind of a moving target, it's very difficult to compare an ebook checkout to a use on lynda.com, like what, is, what exactly is a use in that case. Um, so it was pretty easy when we had those standard logins, searches, full text views, checkouts to measure. Uh, but now we have a whole new gamut of, of ways we evaluate resources and there's no clear way forward. So I'm looking forward to discussing that further in a second. Um, 